just told the team, I, you know, the, the type of defense we played and the approach to the game was, was championship basketball, and that's what um, they took great pride in uh, to make sure that we come out and we played in a way that, uh, that we all could be proud of, and, and they certainly did that. And, and uh, I was very, very proud of how, how hard we played, how connected we were as a group. 24 points in the first nine and a half minutes, I think. Uh, had to be one of your best overall players uh, a long time. Yeah, and I um, I think the players will tell you too, it started with our defense. And, and anytime you play defense, and that was our emphasis, that we didn't like the tempo, uh, whether it was the last LA game or just in general. Uh, we started in Tulsa having a greater emphasis of pushing the ball off of our defense and um, you know, just being more persistent about what we were doing. And, and I think you saw that from... You know, I, I was a little disappointed. I thought we had more than 14 fast break points. Uh, we got some tough scores here uh, with regard to fast break points, but um, but I, I liked our tempo. I, I just thought whether it was in the, the allotted seven seconds, I think it is, to get a fast break point. I just liked our approach and being persistent of attacking the rim and, and uh, sharing the ball and playing off our defense and having flow. And Lindsey Whalen was a big, big part of that. So we set the tone in every quarter. I think first quarter, or second quarter, scored the first seven points. Yep. Uh, you know. It's one of those things that, uh, not that I, I slept particularly well the last couple of nights, but anytime you know, the night before a game, you go into a game knowing you've got Lindsay Whale on your side, um, you feel pretty good that, uh, uh, that she's going to be there for you. And uh, she, I think she told me almost every quarter, is, I got you, coach. I got you. And that, that was, um, she understood what was needed. Her recognition that when she comes out and plays like that, it helps to set the tone. And, and uh, her, her pick at half court to start the game defensively, uh, really set the tone for the rest of the way. Are the big three out of the doghouse? <laughs> um, you know, I, I was a little disappointed, and I don't know who started that, the big three. Um, I, I, I said starting five, and then it, it got whittled down to big three. Uh, the big three are part of the starting five. Um, so I think it was Sansevier that, that wrote that. Um, there was a headline. Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, I was disappointed in our starting five. Uh, the big three is obviously a big part of that, but, um, but that was the starting five. So the starting... Five are in much better shape than what they were a couple days ago. <laughs> you said before the game, probably joking to a certain extent, that you had a whole week to fester on, this, on that last yeah. game. And, and while no, I wasn't joking. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, it's pretty clear that there was a purpose right from the very beginning. It wasn't going to be like a week ago. Yeah, and I didn't expect it to be even remotely close to a week ago. Um, you know, we, we have a tough history in L.A., uh, as a lot of teams do, a lot of teams I've been a part of. And like Jim Pete said, he's taken a lot of losses in that building in Staples Center. Um, I think more than anything, it's not it's not the L, it's the way, uh, the way that we did it. And, and um, you know, it, like I said, it was unacceptable on every level. And, and so what you saw tonight, you know, was, was obviously it was still fresh in our minds. It was fresh in our minds when we played Tulsa that we wanted to do it differently. And then obviously we, you know, we had a crack at L.A. pretty soon right after that. And, um, you know, we, we were good. I mean, I, I know that LA, LA's a good team, and they, they were ready to play. Uh, I just thought that we set the tone, uh, much like they did to us out there. So this next game on, on Tuesday should be really interesting. What do, you, what do you expect? Well, you know, I expect a great game. Every time that these two teams play, fully, both coaches, I can tell you, fully expect to, uh, to be in it possession by possession, and, and it come down to the last five minutes, and whoever makes the plays wins the games. That, that's fully what we expect. And, um, you know, we know it's going to be hard in L.A. You know, it's hard for everybody out there. They're, they're a great team at home, and, and uh, you know, we've, we've got to be even better. We've got to get production from, from everybody, not, not just a couple people. We've got to get it from everybody. Would you, would you consider L.A. to be the, the team's biggest Western Conference rival right now? Nah, um, I think the rival thing is hard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough for me to, to, uh, to talk about L.A. without, you know, saying, saying something I might regret. Um, you know, when, when, you, when you're, I always say this, L.A. sports. When you're not in L.A., everybody hates L.A. and Everybody wants to beat L.A. Uh, but to say it's a rivalry yet, you know, I'm not sure. I just know that, uh, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, that, that picked L.A. to be one of the best teams, and we were picked to be one of the best teams, and... Uh, we know there's going to be great games. There's great players on both sides. You know, Carol Ross is a great coach, and you know it's uh, you know it, it has it's the makings of a really really good series throughout throughout the season, especially we played them five times. The extended play and the strong production from Deborah Peters is that a snapshot of things to come? Well, I don't know. Um, Deb has done this before, and uh, the maturity will be: can she do it uh, on a consistent basis? We've seen her have these great games before. Um, you know, I do know that she's she's been the object of our attention 
in terms of uh, maturing as a player and, and you know finishing around the basket. You know, I, I thought she did that much better tonight. Um, she's become a much better jump shooter, even though she didn't show that tonight. But what she gives us every time she plays is somebody's going to give us great effort, and she's going to go get your rebounds and get your possessions. And uh, doesn't play a perfect game by any stretch uh, because she plays so hard and plays so fast. Sometimes she she uh, overdoes it with some of the plays she tries to make, and they result in turnovers. But um, you know, we'll, we'll take her play tonight, and, and uh, you know, I'd really like to see her develop some consistency with what she does in her minutes. And you know, tonight she was impressive. Is she on the verge of a starting spot? I don't know if I can say that. I, I'm not big on on that. Um, you know, we, we need more of Adam McCarvel. Um, you know, our front line tonight was two for ten. You know, we need far more out of, of those two, out of Brunson and McCarvel. Um, but I, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody running in the locker room and, and saying to Janelle she's on the verge of losing her job. I don't want that. Um, you know, Janelle has a starting job. Janelle's important to our team. Um, I definitely need more out of her. Uh, but if you guys, you, you, get a, you get a bench player like Deb or, you know, if Amber has a night, you know, we haven't seen it since Phoenix, but if Amber, you know, can play effectively, then i got a bench that can, you know, really be effective. And that's important. So I'm not looking for any changes in the starting lineup. Is Jerry... I think she is. Uh, I haven't got the full report. Uh, she's hurting, you know. Was it, um, was it a hip? No, it's her head. She got she got hit in the head. Um, so that was, um, you know, unfortunate, you know, because it, it put a little bit of a damper on it. Our, our players are concerned about her because she had her bell run pretty good, and she's not feeling very good right now. So if you guys could be quiet when you go into the media room, she'll appreciate that. She got a pretty good headache. Was there uh, outclassed LA forty-seven to twenty-eight on the boards tonight? Was there anything in particular that led to that intensity? Well, I just think, again, when, when we play the game the, the way that we did, I, I know that when we talked about um, every time we play, we want rebounding to be a separator, but we felt like, particularly in this series, rebounding is a separator. Um, I don't expect to, to um, get the, sep the separation that we had tonight, differential-wise, um, but it was a product of us you know, just being really quick to the ball, us wanting it uh, and being aggressive and, and hunting them down. And you know, Dev had six offensive rebounds. That was a big part of it and giving us extra chances. And, you know, the guards getting in there and digging them out. But, uh, you know, Simone had just one more than a dead man. Uh, but other than that, I thought everybody else was a dead man gets zero. So <laughs> anybody was wondering. Um, but I thought overall that we really were locked into what we needed to do. What's the paint? It's kind of ridiculous too, huh? Yeah, yeah, that was a number that really jumped out at me. Um, you know, that was our shell defense. You know, that was, I mean, these players are so sick of hearing me right now. Um, but we felt like that was the key to the game. You know, with a you know our shell not allowing penetration and being there for each other when we were getting beat, uh, I thought we made it really tough for Harding tonight. And, and she's a good player and still had respectful numbers. And um, but the, she was she was a player that you know uh, gained a lot of our uh, attention defensive game plan wise. How has your of relationship with that starting five developed to the point where you can call them out a little bit like you did this week? I don't know. Um, my mom was disappointed. Um, that I was so public uh, about how I felt, but um, I told her that the media took it out of context. <laughs> she, believed it. she thinks that yeah, it happens a lot. But, um, you know, uh, I just, you know, I, I, I spend so much time um, with, with these guys talking about sometimes things happen and you can't over overblow uh, situations. But I thought it was really important for this team to understand uh, that it was not acceptable and uh, that we're not going to put that in the category of sometimes things happen. Uh, so that that was really the message that uh, we needed to demand more of ourselves, and I don't expect us to be the team to ever get blown out. How did they respond? I mean, obviously we saw they responded in their play tonight, but what was kind of the, the go between like between you guys as far as rough days? About that? Yeah. Rough days, really rough days. Um, you know, they had to endure criticism. Um, you know, um, but they they you know they understood. They understood, and then, luckily for me, they you know like I told Kent the other day that. They want the same thing, which is they want to be successful. And so if you have anybody that doesn't want the same thing, then, then you have problems. If they're not willing to put in the work uh, or, or the dirty work, that's probably more it. If they're not willing to do it, then, then you have a little more of a problem. But I'm very, very fortunate that our best players are willing to do that. What kind of takeaways do you have from the last game and tonight that you can use for Tuesday? Um, you know, I think what's really cool, you know, when you, when you play a team like this so many times in a row, every game is going to be so different. Um, you know, I suspect that the game on Tuesday will be what everyone expects, which is back and forth, back and forth, five minutes to go. Who has the ability to execute in key moments? Uh, they'll have their crowd behind them. You know, they'll be at home type of thing. 
you know, but, but if we can hang around five minutes to go and, and put ourselves in position to execute our stuff at the end, you know, then, then that's what it should be. Is that, that's what I'm expecting in game three. Thanks,